Hello and welcome to Video DNA, where the English is bad and the tutorials are good. I'm Nihat Aviv and today I'm gonna show you a tutorial that's gonna rock you. Rock. Get it? Ah, never mind. Watch the slideshow. Well, what's so exciting about this technique and Actually, this is all created by a material and you can use it on anything, on text, on spheres, on planes, on anything. And the cool thing about this texture, it's totally procedural. So you can create an infinite number of stones or asteroids or whatever you need and you can actually change the texture for your different needs. But if you want to use the created shape, you can actually use this technique with a displacer and use it for collisions and simulations and or whatever you need. So let's get started. I'm gonna open a new file and I'm using the magic preview. It's a free plugin, Google it, get it, use it. And I'm gonna create a new sphere and I want to show you something. I don't want this regular sphere. I want the icosahedron, I think that's the name because I want everything to be triangled. And I'm going to create a new material. I'm going to put it on the sphere and I'm going to call this material rock. And the first thing I want to do, I want to create a texture. Not a regular texture, but a noise texture. And I'm going to go to the noise properties and I'm going to change the noise type to blistered tubulance. And I'm going to change the colors to something I think maybe I'm going to, it's going to be black, but the white should be something a little bit more beige, a little bit brighter. Perfect. I don't want this hot spot, so I'm going to check off the reflectance and I want to create some bumps. So I'm going to check the bump and I'm going to create actually the same texture and blister tubulance and this looks pretty good but I want to see how does it go on the sphere. So I'm going to create a new infinite light and I'm gonna change it direction I think to this direction and this looks pretty good but maybe I want now it looks like the moon uh, maybe I want to strengthen it up a bit or maybe I'm gonna go inside and change the global scale to 50 yeah that looks pretty good and 20 was just fine so now for the displacement but before that, I want to create another light and let's say a backlight. So I'm going to duplicate the light and I'm going to rotate it and maybe to this side and a little bit downwards. Yeah, something like this. I'm going to change the color of it to a bluish tint. And maybe the main light should be stronger and the intensity of the backlight to be 150 perfect so now i want to go back to the material and now i want to create a displacement and i'm gonna create a new noise texture and it's gonna be voronoi one and i'm gonna change the scale of it to 1000 but i don't see any changes so i'm gonna turn it back to 100 and this happens because all the spheres are rendered perfect as a default. So I'm going to check this off and now I can see some things going on. So I'm going to take the global scale. I'm going to change it to 1000. And now I need to go back to the displacement tab, change the height to 50 centimeters or so. And so it's not going to be so low poly. I'm gonna check on the sub polygon displacement and I'm gonna bump it up even to five. Well, that looks, that looks pretty nice, uh, but I don't like that I don't have shadows. So I'm gonna take the first light, the key light, and I'm gonna create ray traced shadows. And for the backlight, I'm gonna create some soft shadows. Yeah, perfect. And now it's the time maybe to put another light but this time it's just gonna be an ambient light and I'm gonna take it down to maybe 
so I can see just a little bit of details. Maybe 15. Whoop, too much. 12. Well, that's enough. So let's go back to the displacement and I want to put this noise inside a layer. So I'm going to create a few more level of details. So now I can create a new shader. I'm going to create a noise shader. I'm going to copy this shader. I'm going to paste it right over here. And this looks the same. And that's because I didn't change the properties. So I'm going to change the global scale to 300. And now it's going to be all bumpy. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to change the opacity to 20%. So now I have this little box that looks just perfect, but it looks too perfect. So I want to change this perfectness with another layer of noise. And this time it's going to be, yeah, you guessed right, blistered two blends. And I'm going to go outside. I'm going to take this down maybe to 10%. And this is going to break entirely. And if I want more detail, I can take the subdivision level up to six but after that it's gonna start to render pretty slow so you know if you need more if you need a close-up you can take it even up to seven because it doesn't look that sharp but if this is what you see in the frame it's gonna be pretty fine on five or six well and now for the fun part if you don't like the shape of the rock you can go inside the layer and do the base texture and change the seed to whichever number you like and each number will give you a different kind of rock so if you want to continue this tutorial with After Effects tutorial that's gonna show you how you can create this in After Effects because this is actually based on a technique from Soft Image you can pretty much create a keyframe right over here and after 90 frames change it to 1000 and create another keyframe and now you have a different rock on each frame which is pretty awesome and now you can render this out as frames and continue this ah there it is perfect but if you want to use the shape that you got that this sphere is not going to remain a sphere you need to follow a few more steps so first of all we're going to take the base noise and shut it off and you notice that it became very small and that's because everything went dark so i'm going to create a new color and this color is going to be beneath the second noise layer and i want to change this to gray like 50% gray and now it actually looks like a Ferrero Rocher is that how you call it I don't know it's supposed to be in Italian it's maybe a Ferrero Rocher no lo so uh, anyway now the next part is not about this rock texture it's actually about the displacer deformer so I'm gonna put the displacer underneath the sphere and I'm gonna go to the shading tab and I'm gonna create the same texture the noise I'm gonna take the Voronoi one and I'm going to change the global scale to 1000 and now I need to go to the sphere and change the segments maybe to 64 or maybe more or less but I need to go back to the displacer to change the height to 50 centimeters and now I can get this cool rock again and I can use it for anything but if you noticed everything slows down and that's because we have too many faces underneath the hood so I'm gonna take the subdivision levels to maybe three or maybe four but now it looks pretty good and all I need to do now is uh, assign a simulation tag um, I'm gonna create this as a rigid body and I'm gonna create a new plane and I'm gonna take the plane down and I'm gonna scale it up just a bit and I'm gonna assign a um, collider body tag to it and let's enjoy the show and you can change everything you change the texture to what you need you can change the friction of the rock uh, to what you need maybe 70% uh, so it's gonna be a little bit more rocky anyway I hope you learned something cool that rocked your world yeah the same joke I know it and don't forget to 
go to our site and search for other cool tutorials that are not totally related to Cinema 4D but to After Effects. And if you want to go and buy some of our products, it's gonna be so cool because it's gonna save you tons of time and you can subscribe to us by mail to be informed of new tutorials you can be fans of us on Facebook I don't like that word fans but anyway you can be fans you can follow us on Instagram and you can subscribe to us on YouTube and we're close to 1000 that's pretty cool anyway I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I'm Bilan Tabib I'm gonna see you next time